I'm Chilouz reporting for CadRed.org and I'm here with a face I'm sure you are all familiar with, although it's not quite the ending we were expecting because uh, Stefano has uh, took third place but didn't make it to the final. So, I know you're disappointed. Um, what went wrong this time out because I felt you were a clear favourite to win? Well, I guess in this case I was maybe a bit too cocky or overconfident. I didn't expect Mania to play that good or I expect myself to know what he was doing and to understand his play but I didn't really do it correctly so everything was a mistake today. Yeah. Well, let's ask about uh I don't know, your current form in general, it seems to be, I mean everyone knows you're a fantastically talented player, there's no dispute in that, yet of, sometimes you seem to be unstoppable, imperious, brilliant, other times you seem to lose to opponents that realistically it shouldn't be happening to and uh, you recently tweeted not that long ago about how you were ashamed uh, performances at Dreamhack Valencia, yes. so what, what is it, why, why can't you be brilliant all the time? Oh, it's. Uh Tough question, I can say. Uh, I guess I can't be on the top of my performance always, or on top of my shape, I mean. I mean. And sometimes the fact of doing too much tournaments make people know how you play, and I can't really prepare any other strategies, so I can't surprise my opponents. They, everything is expected, and they can do whatever they want, I guess. me. And I'm not in this position where I can surprise my opponents. So it's a little bit easier for them to beat me than for me to beat them. Um, does it uh, hinder you? Because obviously everyone watches your stream all the time. Everyone wants to watch your replays. Uh, do you ever find it that just because everyone wants to be Stefano, it's hard to beat the people that are already copying you? Well, obviously it is because like I'm... Everybody knows me, I have nothing to hide. I can't hide anything. Otherwise, it doesn't work. If I don't stream, I don't get money. And if I don't get money, there's no point for soccer to. So, I have to stream. And if I stream, they see what I do. And I can't prepare any secret strategies against them, which makes it hard. Yeah. Well, how much does the rock and roll lifestyle uh, come into it? Because I, I, I know we don't want to talk about anything you know, controversial, but I think it's fair to say that you're more interesting than most StarCraft 2 players. Everyone knows you like to enjoy yourself, you like to have a drink. Uh, you're not like a typical Korean, for example. Uh, you have a big personality. Uh, do you ever think that sometimes that impacts on you being as good a player uh, as you can be, or do you think the two can work? You can party and you can be good. Well, I don't think there's any rule which forbids partying and having a life and playing soccer too. The thing, uh, what I'm trying to do is just say who I am and don't change for soccer too. Because when I started soccer too, I was studying same time, and I had soccer too as like a, a second activity. Yeah. And at some, when I finished my studies, it became my first activity. But still, uh, soccer too is not my main thing in the life. I still do stuff, and I think it's really important to not like change for the game or try harder than what you can. Just do what you need to do, and not more. Uh, everyone knows you're, uh, you know, studying medicine, and you are. Uh, you always said that you were going to retire, and StarCraft II was just a means to get your money. I remember having, uh, well, hearing that last uh, ESWC, I think it was, when you were saying, you know, uh, when you won it, you were maybe thinking about retiring from the yeah. game because you made the money. Why do you stay playing it? I mean, realistically, if you know it's not going to be a big part of your future, what keeps you involved in StarCraft II? Well, I think I didn't want to stop. Um Last summer, because I was like on top of my shape, I just won an ASL 3 and some other tournaments, or online tournaments and stuff. So I was very really confident and yeah. I had like the good state of mind to go on another stack of two years, year I mean. Um, so I was really motivated, that's what make me, made me make, make this yeah. choice. And right now I'm on the, like different position, because I keep losing some tournaments and stuff.
So I'm thinking about stopping. So that's how you see I stop. I yeah, going, right. Yeah. I see. Um, so you've, since you've moved to Evil Geniuses, is it a bit of a uh, culture shock, a little bit different to what you used to? Because you've always been in organizations where you, Stefano is in charge. Stefano is the boss of Stefano. Now you're in Evil Geniuses and everybody knows people like Alex, people like the Scoots, they're going to be on you if you do anything. And uh, uh, Is it hard to adapt to that? Oh yes, it's really hard because I used to do whatever I want when I wanted it. Right now I have to be a bit more professional, which explains uh, maybe some uh, loss of uh, how to say motivation, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Because, um, like I said, uh, when you don't show who you are, or at least for me, I keep doing good. But when I have to make some efforts. To change and to adapt, it makes me play worse, and that's the case right now. But it's a great organization, very professional, and I would still make this choice if I had to do it again. Do you think uh, being at an organization like Evil Genius is going to provide you with more opportunities, or do you think sometimes it's actually going to provide you with less because of how you have to behave and how you have to change to, to be part of a mainstream organization? I think it will open more doors than close uh, closed doors because um, they are like very very popular on gaming. It's like the best team I think or the richest team. I yeah. Can say. Well, yes. Huge. Yeah. And so playing for them would make me known on the American continent and maybe Asian because I wasn't yeah. really known there. So. Um, Maybe it's bad for um, like French opportunities, but for the world opportunities, it's better, I think. Uh, what's it like being on a team with players that people see as underachievers? And how, uh, what, what, what do you uh, do in terms of offering encouragement to people? Because obviously, people say in control, um, you know, maybe he'd be better off as a commentator. Some people say Idra will never be as good as what he was. Um, you know, I mean, you've heard all the same things that I've heard. Uh, do you um, interact with them and, and offer them words of encouragement? Do you help them improve their game or do you think that criticism actually shouldn't be happening? Uh, I don't think so. I'm kind of a lonely soldier right now in the EG. Well, I have people who ask me for help, but I don't go by myself proposing my help. So, no. I'm not in this kind of team spirit right now, not yet. So you are still a little bit yeah, Stefano. By myself. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about just uh, the tournament and then I'll let you go because uh, I know you've got lots to think about. Um, obviously, we did expect you to be in the final, but now that you're not there, uh, who do you think is going to win the final and, and why? Well, I hope Mana will win because in this case I would have lost the winner of the tournament. But if 4DG wins, too, it wouldn't be an unexpected, I can say. Um, okay, uh, nice and short to the point. Last question, bit of a difficult one for you. So, uh, it, it, right, you've got lots of fans, you've got lots of people who aren't fans. Um, does it kind of hurt you when you uh, read threads on Reddit or whatever and if people are trying to take away things that you've made for yourself based on I don't know, maybe mistakes you've made, things you've said, things you've done. People want to come after you, they want to come after your job, your livelihood, your sponsors. Do you think that's part of the territory of being one of the best, one of the elite? Or do you think that's actually quite harsh and, and a, a damning indictment on internet culture? I didn't really understand, actually. <laughs> I, I reckon you did. It was too long. I, I reckon you did. Okay. Make it short. I will. Does it, does it hurt your feelings when people are trying to take things away from you that you've built up for yourself? Uh, it did in the beginning, because uh, I was kind of new in this kind of environment. Nobody ever tried to do something to me like that. Right now, I got a bit used to it, and I really don't care anymore. Whatever they say, I just don't care. So you will always remain Stefano? Otherwise and forever. Okay. Thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us. Really appreciate it. All the people out there, there we go. We did get the interview with Stefano finally. So do stay tuned to the website. Even though he's not going to be in the final, we are going to follow the coverage right until the very end at ESWC 2012.